10, 10, 10, 9, 8, 8, 8, 7, 6. Main engine start. 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Columbia. We've got the generic E2X. This is its second flight of its lifetime. And the last flight we flew on an A83 and we hit 98.7 feet, roughly 100 feet. Today we're running a B44, so I'm hoping to double the altitude. So I'm, I'm looking for close to 200 feet, if not more. So we'll be flying that here. In a second, I've got all the cameras rolling. I've got the altimeter on board, the Flight Sketch Mini. It's armed and ready. A little overcast, but not too bad. It's early morning. There's no wind whatsoever. Running a 15 inch parachute. And we are going in five, four, three, two, one. Good deployment. Great, great flight. Coming right overhead. I wonder if I should try to catch it. Got it! Oh, all right. Didn't touch the ground. Good, good flight. Everything worked perfectly. Uh, there we go. ground. Good, good flight. Everything worked perfectly. Uh, there we go. Two, one. 
one. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're running the Yankee on a C65 motor and I am running the 9 inch parachute the same one I showed in my uh, video on how to prepare a chute for low power um, yeah I just want to make sure that that technique works I'm running a friction fit motor on the front sorry Joe uh, not much I can do about it now but uh, it is what it is <laughs> so all the cameras are rolling altimeter is armed Skies are clear, still cloudy, but that's okay. Winds are relatively calm. Okay, we're going in five, four, three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have no idea where it is. I have no sight of it whatsoever. And I kind of need to find it because it's got my camera and altimeter on board. <laughs> Let's see. The, the altimeter showing it hit at 98 feet. I ain't buying that. A good possibility that the motor ejected, but we should still see the rocket, and I don't. Okay, well after an exhaustive search, look what I stumbled upon guys. I found it. It's uh, I don't know. Not too bad, but it definitely jammed up at the front. The motor is MIA, which explains why it didn't deploy right. So you got me there, Joe. Definitely got me on that one. Uh, never to be done again. Let's see, the altimeter. It looks okay. It's not downloading any data right now. Uh, the camera is not on, but uh, I'll, I'll play with that. So anyway, we did find it, and uh, we'll see what we can get off the uh, altimeter.
two, one. Open, come on, come on, come on. Okay, a little bit different flight here. I'm running the Alpha 3, which is obviously my, my first rocket. Um, but I'm using it as a test bed. I'm just running an A83, but the reason I'm running it today is I'm testing out a new altimeter. I've got the Estes uh, basic altimeter that Estes sells, but I've modified it in that I've added a... Uh, I didn't... I took the casing off and I added some wiring to run the battery kind of separately from the unit itself. So you, you'll see what I mean when we get to the rocket because I'm going to see the altitude when we retrieve it. So let me check the skies. Skies are clear. Winds are perfectly calm. So now's the time to go. Cameras are rolling. We're going in five, four, three, two, one. Open. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Whew. All right, kind of landed in the bush too. All right, excellent. Okay, it's hiding just on the other side of this bush here. And hopefully we got some good altitude readings off the altimeter. We got a little bit of a tangle up on the chute it looked like, but it came down okay. Not too bad. But let's uh, see if I can do this one-handed. Okay. And you can see what I mean by I took it out of its casing. There we go. And we're getting a reading. See, I've got the battery wired separately from like the case. But uh, we got an altitude of 168. So, good, it worked. And that's about right. It looked about 168 feet or so. So, a great test flight. Okay, there's no real way to uh, describe this other than <laughs> this is a maiden flight on a brand new rocket that I've converted from a Target store rocket science rocket kit that runs on baking soda and vinegar and I converted it to flying Estes motors. So I'll, I'll do a little highlight video after this if it's successful. If not, then you may not even know about this. But uh, they say it soars up to 50 feet using their liquid propulsion. But every video I've seen, I don't think I've seen it go more than 15 or 20 feet. <laughs> but I'm running a B4 
I'm sorry, a B64 on this main flight. So I'm hoping to get at least 100 feet, which would double what they claim it gets with the liquid propulsion. Uh, running an 18 inch parachute, onboard altimeter, uh, running two actually, the Flight Sketch Mini and my new Estes altimeter. So we'll do a little comparison on the two altimeters as well. So cameras are rolling, altimeter is armed, main flight, have no idea what to expect. This could be a total flop or it might work. No clue. So skies are clear, winds are calm. We're going in five, four, three, two, one. So far so good. It worked guys, it actually worked. All right, <laughs> fantastic. There it sits. I am, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little surprised, but at the same time, I'm thrilled. And I didn't mention this before launch, but I want to thank my daughter Joanna, who bought this kit for me, just as, you know, an idea to see what I can do with it and might have a little fun with it. And I think she'll be pleased with the results that it actually flew on an Estes motor. So thank you, Joanna, and uh, awesome, awesome conversion kit. Okay, this is flight number two on the little rocket science kit rocket. Uh, my goal was to hit 100 feet because I wanted to double what they claim you could do, which was 50, but I came up a little short. I was at 90, 97 feet. So that was on a B motor. So what I've decided to do is throw a C63 in there and see if I can't bust that 100 foot mark. So undet uh, undeterred, we're gonna go for it. Skies are clear. There's a helicopter way off in the distance, but it's flying away. So if that's what you hear, don't worry about it. Uh, winds are calm. Skies are still clear. Everything's armed. Cameras are rolling. We're going in five, four, three, two, one. Whoa. Clunk. <laughs> That's okay. It's a pretty robust rocket, but I, I, I think we probably hit 100 feet. So we'll go check. Oh, sure enough. Check this out, guys. Altimeter shows 119. So congratulations. We, uh, we did more than what they claim you could do. Okay, now that was an interesting flight in that it was accelerating fine, but then it, it almost like reached a point of 
speed where it just could not go any faster and when it tried to it became aerodynamically unstable so it's kind of interesting how it's got that limit to it but we did get an ejection everything came out it's just that uh, I don't think we had enough time to oh you know what it didn't all come out I thought it did look at that the shoe got hung up right at the tip and I had it wrapped in a little Nomex blanket um, well that's too bad but uh, anyway yeah no damage whatsoever you can't you can hardly I mean you have to rip this thing apart with your hands to destroy it so that was that was a lot of fun so Joanna thank you again and uh, we're gonna keep at it we're gonna keep working on it and try to get higher and higher each flight Okay, I want to do a little tutorial with you on this Smithsonian rocket science kit and again this kit is designed to I don't know if you can see in the picture that's actually liquid coming out that's vinegar and baking soda mixed and this plastic tube here on the main body is the chamber where the the vinegar I think is held and then you put the baking soda in the launch pad and when you mix them together it goes you know it shoots up but they claim it only goes 50 feet but from what I've seen online, I, I've not seen many people get it even halfway up that that height. So, but what I decided to do uh, was take this kit and modify it and convert it into a flying Estes type rocket. And I want to show it to you here. First thing I had to do, and excuse the aircraft flying over, but I had to cut the the body tube right where just just below where the shoulder started to taper down because I wanted to give a little room for the coupler to glue in but I, now this is very crude folks I took a toilet paper roll and I cut it and I expanded it so I had to add a little insert there to fill the gap but uh, I built a coupler out of that glued it in with CA glue the CA glue with accelerator does seem to glue pretty well and bond to the plastic of the body so I went ahead and glued the coupler in. I glued a piece of foam in there. That way I could you know, put my altimeters and things in the nose and it would kind of hold them in place so they wouldn't fall out or anything. And the, but the major modifications were back in the, the rear section. Now this, what you're seeing here, the gray foam is not glued on. It just slides onto the white tube. In fact, I could slide it off at any time. So that's why it looks a little crooked and, and that's okay. It, obviously you saw it fly, it, it's fine. But um, so I, I did. I took an Estes standard 18 millimeter motor mount, and I used the centering rings to kind of pinch it around the nozzle of the plastic. Uh, you'd almost have to kind of see the kit to understand what I'm saying. Actually, let me take the. Okay, I'm doing this on the fly here. So you can see the nozzle. I've actually got it pinched between a centering ring here and another centering ring that's right as it opens up down in there. Now, I just you know, excuse the mess, it's already flown a couple flights. But that kind of pinching the, the, the tube in there like that with CA glue, and it, it actually bonded very well. It held it. Uh, and of course I wanted to go with a friction fit, so I went, or not a friction fit, a non-friction fit. So I went with the, uh, the mount that comes with the engine hook. And then I just uh, tied a tether around it, the shock cord of the Kevlar cord, and then uh, ran it through a Nomex blanket there, then tied some elastic to it all the way up to the nose cone, which now the nose cone, you can't really see past the foam too well. But there's a, I, a little screw down in there. Yeah, there it is. You can see it. I, I tied a knot from the Kevlar around the screw, and I just screwed the s screw into the plastic up in the nose cone. And last but not least, I just glued a standard launch lug onto the corner there of the, of the wing. So there it is. Let me 
see if I can put it back together and I'll, I'll show you the final product. So there it is, there's the final kit in its uh, ready to fly condition. You know, it, the foam is kind of flimsy and you know, that's probably why at certain speeds when it was accelerating on that last flight, you know, they just probably folded over and, and really threw the aerodynamics off. But uh, all in all, it's a fun little rocket to, to modify. I, I don't know if I would have as much fun running the liquid as I am with the motors because I'm getting obviously more altitude. And uh, you get a good parachute in there. If you got time for it to open, it comes down nice and slow. So awesome little kit. So again, uh, my daughter Joanna got this for me and uh, I'm tickled with the way it turned out. So thank you again to her and uh, yeah, more flights to come.